Welcome, I'm Dr. Melina Roberts and I want to talk about food allergies, food intolerances, and food sensitivities because often these words are used interchangeably and I just want to give a definition to these words so that we can have a better understanding of what's actually going on in the body and what we mean when we say a food allergy, a food intolerance, a food sensitivity because these are different things that could potentially uh, be reactions in the body. Now a food allergy typically is a sudden reaction, immune response to a food in the body. Um, so us taking in a food, having a sudden reaction, usually this is mediated by an immunoglobulin called immunoglobulin E antibodies and it'll have uh, usually an anaphylactic reaction where throat is swelling up and or you're having a reaction right onto the skin. The reaction is immediate and it can potentially be life-threatening. So these are serious things that we need to um, identify and really avoid for a lifetime. So the common ones we'll see that are these anaphylactic reactions will be peanut allergies. We see a pine nut allergies and seafood is another common one as well. So these are usually diagnosed with skin prick tests and that's how we evaluate these, uh, these food allergies. Now there's another type of food allergy which is mediated by the IgG, so immunoglobulin G antibodies, and these can be a delayed reaction. So these are a little bit different than the anaphylactic reactions because you can have it either immediate or the reaction can happen later on, it can actually happen days later. And the reaction can also be dose dependent. So it can depend on if you just take in a little bit of the food or if you take in a large amount of the food, you can have that reaction. And it can also relate to how well your body can actually break down those antibodies or if those antibodies are staying in the in the tissues, if those stain in the tissues, then they can cause inflammation in those tissues and cause a reaction in the body. So this is another type of reaction. It's the IgG allergic reaction, which is typically a delayed allergic reaction. So the next term that I want to define is food intolerances. Now food intolerances will typically happen because we're not able to properly digest a food because of genetics or because of lack of certain enzymes in the body. So an example would be lactose intolerances. And lactose intolerances occur because we have a lack of an enzyme called lactase that breaks down lactose. So lactose is found in dairy products. And so if we don't have enough of this lactase enzyme, then we can experience a lactose intolerance, which can lead to a number of different symptoms in the body. But really it's because we don't have enough of this enzyme. Another example would be a histamine intolerance. So we don't have enough of the enzymes that break down histamine. So we end up with a large amount of histamine in the body, which causes amount of amount of inflammation in the body, which can lead to um, an inflammatory picture in the body. And when we're taking in this these foods, we have an increased amount of histamine that isn't being broken down. So the third term I want to define is food sensitivity. Now food sensitivities are definitely a lot harder to diagnose. In general, if you're eating the food and it makes you feel worse, then there's a food sensitivity. And when you remove that food from your diet and it makes you feel better, then this is uh, 
typically how we can define a food sensitivity, but what's happening is that when we take in that food, it can be causing inflammation in our bodies. And we can have reactions immediately or we can have a delayed reaction. Typically, you're having a reaction somewhere between zero and 30 hours. And when we're taking in these foods, they aren't necessarily having an allergic reaction, but they are causing some inflammation in our system, which can make us feel quite uncomfortable. So what can happen is that when we take in the food, it makes us feel worse. And when we remove the food from our diet, it can make us feel better. So these can be sort of a simplified way to identify food sensitivities in our system. So we can be experiencing these food sensitivities for a number of reasons. It can be because we have a lack of enzymes to properly break down these foods. It can be because we don't have enough stomach acids to help break down these foods. Or it can be that we have some dysbiosis, some imbalances in that gut flora, and that could be reasons why we're not effectively able to break down these foods. So sometimes it can be that once we work on healing the digestive tract and helping the body to digest foods better and making sure that we have enough stomach acids in our bodies to break down those foods, then these food sensitivities can be cleared up. And sometimes these foods are such big triggers for inflammation in our system that it's really just better to avoid them altogether. So I hope that gives you more information about the differences between food allergies, food intolerances, and food sensitivities. So thank you so much for listening. I encourage you to share this information with your friends and family, to press the like button, to make a comment below, and until next time, continue to learn, grow, and build health.